Blue Brand, Blue Brand. That's it. Let him up. G'day, Martin. Greg. Mongrel looking turnouts, aren't they? Latest mob from the Queensland property. Yes, they won't make the Barrington fortune. They'll fat no good pasture. Bring us a price. One of them got dad last year. Yeah. Yeah, that was rotten luck. Give one to your mate, you bludger. <laughs> Jesus, good to see you. Good to see you. Look at you. Flashes a rat with a gold hey, tooth. bush loud. <laughs> How come you're back from university? Oh, mate, it's a long, long story. Oh, it's like that, is it? What's Sir Rupert got to say about it? Well, I've been dodging father since I got in last night. Uh, you'll get away with it, you always have, you bludger. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the only one bludging on the Barringers. Right, you lot, what do you think? This is a bloody picnic. Queensland property for a few months. We'll clear out those scrubber pools and put some good blood stock in among them. Yeah. All right, you're on. With a bit of practice, you might make a fair off cider. I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll speak to father about it. Hey, it looks like you've got your chance. <laughs> you ready to release him? OK, easy. Let him go. Go. Is there a shortage of stockmen? Well, I thought I'd just help them in. Our... breakfast, Martin. Wanted an early ride. I see. Uh, Dick and I were talking about the Queensland. I haven't time now. See him in my study first thing after lunch. But damn it, boy. You can't just walk out of university like that. Well, I have. You owe me an explanation. Father, I've had years of schooling. It's enough. In what relevance is a degree in running a cattle property anyway? I don't want you as just another farmer secured in his provincialism. I had hoped you'd go on to my old college at Cambridge. But what I want is to learn this trade. An unfortunate term. But just give me some breathing space for a year. Then if you wish, I'll take my degree. See, Dick and I were talking about the Queensland Out property. Out of the we... question. Why? There's going to be a war. I will not have a Barrington skulking in the outback while a mother country is in peril. Father, what on earth are you talking about? I mean, that war, if it happens, will be 12,000 miles away. What's it got to do with us? Your shallowness astounds me. Perhaps university was a waste of time. Martin, we are British and being oh, British... Oh, I thought we were Australian, Father. And being British carries with it responsibility as well as privilege. But whatever the Europeans want to do is no business of ours. And Britain goes down. How long will this country stand? I've heard all these arguments... You may have heard it, but you obviously haven't listened to it. I'm not going back this year. I accept that, Martin. This year we will have important things to do. I may have an interesting surprise for you which will resolve all our difficulties. And we'll talk later when I know more. Bit of a trimmer, eh? Ah, all right if you like and thin. Built like a racing tadpole. Well, 
well. Potty Calf Jackson and Left Hand McGee. Hey, fair go. That was a long time ago. Stone the crows, it's Kate Baker. Oh, Kate, why didn't you let on it was you? I thought she was one of the city sheilers. Yes. I am a city sheiler. Well? Well what? Give us a lift with the luggage. That's if your brain can send a message to your limbs. I was expecting the anger, but I was surprised at the hurt. One generally is at your age. He seems to have this great master plan. I don't know if I'm ready for it. Martin, you're his only child. It makes it so much harder on him. On all of us. We were hoping that you'd follow the family tradition and finish at Cambridge. <laughs> yes, and acquire that all-important veneer of European civilization. Oh, you've no taste for European culture. Culture? <gasps> Mother, they're tearing each other's throats out over there. <sighs> Don't worry. It's a half a world away. Mum, I'm not running off. I'm just going to visit Dick for a few days. You can come if you like. Hmm. Doesn't seem much of your brother either since he's kicked on at the Barrington place. Bloody rich squatters. Imitation pommies. Use up the working people then throw them aside when they're no longer wanted. Oh, a cottage for life and a pension is hardly what I call being thrown aside. It doesn't bring your father back. Larrikin son of theirs is home. Martin? Yeah? They reckon he got kicked out of that fancy university. Probably swallowed his silver spoon. <laughs> and the Prime Minister has sent a cable to London saying, indescribable enthusiasm and entire unanimity throughout Australia in support of the Empire in war. Here, here. Here, here. We have never been so united. The whole colony will give its nation, full father. We're no longer a colony. A uh, nation, then. We are not at war yet, Rupert. We will be at any moment. The Prussians have been rampaging through Belgium and France for two days now, and they are well past the deadline of Britain's ultimatum. Today's papers report that there's been an exchange of messages between the Tsar, the Kaiser, and King George. Those three are cousins. One must pray. Sanity will prevail. My dear George, you will never change. Always naive. <laughs> well, Rupert, if it is naivety to hope that the nations of our great Western civilization can settle their differences like rational people, then I am, as you say. If a simple farmer like myself can see the thing clearly, <clears throat> then surely you as a scholar can. Whatever the cause, whatever the excuse, the issue is quite plain. Germany is out for world domination. She has planned it and will not be deterred. I say so be it. If we must fight, we are the British Empire, then let's do it now and put the Prussian back in his place. Quite agree, Rupert. A summer storm to clear the air over Europe. Here, here. Rupert has organized with the cabinet that they telephone him when a decision's been made. It's probably only the butcher. <laughs> I say, Martin, um, if it starts, will you be going? Most definitely. Oh, terrific. To oh, Queensland. Oh. oh. What a pity. You'd look splendid in one of those red coats. Oh, I think they went out in the Zulu Wars, Lydia. <laughs> oh, nobody told me. Ladies and gentlemen, Great Britain has declared war on Germany. That's not, oh, not before time either, either, Rupert. Australia, New Zealand and Canada have announced they will be raising forces immediately. Good, oh, sir. Wonderful. Jolly good, Rupert. Once we of the Empire set our minds to... Roberts, it, tell, tell the staff to tap the barrel now. I could be a nurse. <laughs> you painted the sign of bloody mission. Well... 
Then perhaps I could read to the wounded. Oh, well, my dear, this will teach those Germans once and for all. <clears throat> well, for better or for worse, here's to Australia. Australia. No, Martin. We shall drink the toast in their proper order. The king, God bless him, the empire, and then the land we love, Australia. King, 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 king the empire, empire Australia. Australia. If I may have your attention for one last time. Now is the time to confess to a gentle conspiracy I had undertaken on Martin's behalf. In anticipation of the stirring news which came tonight, I cabled my old comrade, the Colonel of the Rifle Brigade. That's the English regiment I had the honor to serve with during the Boer War. I received the reply from London today. The Rifle Brigade is pleased to accept my son Martin into the regiment with the rank of Second Lieutenant. Oh, congratulations, oh, Tom. You must win. You're getting tidy in your old age, mate. Dick! Oh, Kate! My God, vision of loveliness. Gave me the Barrington wit. <laughs> the barrel's down that way. What the hell was a barrel? Do I hear a note of petulance? Very likely. Which shoulder can I cry on? Neither. Oh, oh come on then. Tell all. Oh, no, I'd rather talk about you. They tell me you're a qualified nurse now. Well, congratulations. Thank you, Squire. So, will you be staying into Langarook? Oh, not on your life. That nursing certificate is my passport out of the bush. Was the bush that bad? From my point of view, it is, yes. I have two choices here. Marriage and childbirth, or childbirth and marriage. Yeah. What are you doing? Well, I'm going to looking for a soapbox or something to preach from, you know? Oh, you! Oh, oh, you. Oh, oh, who's got a grope on me sister? Oh, look, there's ants at every picnic. Oh, <laughs> boys, 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 boys. The three of us, huh? Just like old times. Old times don't come back. Oh, we'll make them. Coming down for a beer? Oh, no, I wouldn't want to spoil their little war fever. No, I came to talk to you about Queensland. I'm going, whether father likes it or not. Ah, oh, yeah, Queensland. Well, there's been a bit of a change of plan. What? What's your idea? Well, uh, me and the boys are going to join up. Ah, oh, come on, Marty. Wouldn't want to miss out. See a bit of the world. I've seen a bit of the world. That's why I like it here. Well, they reckon it'll be over by Christmas. We can go to Queensland next year. You've got to be in it, mate. What the hell was that all about? He's having trouble making his first decision. Oh. All of Europe is threatened by the treacherous Hun, even the mother country herself, spared England. Australia, too, is now in the flames. But we have had it otherwise. Oh. Oh. It's only an old piece of bunting. It's only an old piece of rag, but many have died for its honor and shed their life's blood for the flag. Yeah! And in the short space of 13 years since our nation's birth, our own flag. Yeah! Is it worthy of sacrifice? Is it ready for its baptism of fire? Yeah! I now call for volunteers to step forward and be the first 
of the new Australian Imperial Force. Why, if it isn't Tom MacArthur, a hero of the football field. Soon, no doubt, to be a hero of that other greater field. Who's next? Come on, boys, step up. Would to God that I could be with you. Be in it, Mum. Rolly, no, you're too young. Oh, fair go, Mum. A bloke couldn't miss this. It's Australia's first chance to prove something to the rest of the world. Oh, that's what I want, boys. Come on, the rest of you too. I want you to get in the line, sign up, and I'll be right there, right there with you, boys. Hey, come on, you blokes. You joining up? Of course we are. We'll be there. Take care of my dog, mate. You'll follow me all the way to Ballarat. Where's your fine friend Barrington now? Martin's all right. I didn't ask about his health. I asked where is he right now when he's wanted among his mates. Marty can make up his own mind. Go on, Dick. What are you waiting for? The war will be over by the time we get there. About time you got here, Andy. You finish your shearing or what? Go on, Dick. Let's go. Good on you. Wish I was going to meet you. Bye. Bye, boys. Thank you for dropping in so promptly, Martin. Sit down, Martin. We'll miss young Baker. He's uh, leaving today, I understand. Yes. Waste of time, of course. He'll be back before long. The Australian Army. No future there. Probably only used for garrison duties behind the line. Well, Martin, what about you? I suppose I'll be off to the Queensland property. The Empire's at war, blast it! You say a fellows will never get near it, so why bother? I offered you an honourable alternative. The English Commission. Is that all you've got to say about the finest regiment in the British Army? Father, it's not for me. I understand one damn thing about you now. Except your desire to contradict me at every turn. Father, I'm not contradicting you. It's my life. Then and I suggest you get on with it. And it's my decision. Move the stop. I might as well let him go. You came to see them off, did you? Uh huh. Well, you're too late. Ah, well, I'd better get after them and make my farewells. It's a lovely day for a ride. You care to join me? <laughs> yeah. No point in walking the whole way. Which way are you heading? Queensland. Oh, well, I'm going to France. Yeah, well, that's what I mean. I'm heading to Queensland the long way, via France. <laughs> <laughs> you and I have got an arrangement, mate. <laughs> Thanks, Kate. Be seeing you. Yes, you probably will. Did you pack your lunch? <laughs> See you, fella. Well, Good to have you with us, Marty. how far we got, eh? <laughs> What's the river got to say about oh, all this? The river is just Oh, yeah. <laughs> I bet he's not too happy about it. Boys! 
Boys, I cannot let this historic moment pass without a few words. As your member of parliament, most of you know me. For those of you that don't, keep your hands on your wallets. <laughs> we are as one on this great issue. Australia will defend the mother country to the last man and the last shilling. Would to God that I could go with you, boys. Oh, no. I fair think I'm would to God. As one whose duty lies at the home front, I want you boys always to know that Cyril Earnshaw is right behind you. Yeah, 12,000 miles behind you. If you had one speck of shame, you'd join up. I am going to join up. going to join your outfit. My outfit? Yeah, B Company. Be here when they go and be here when they come back. <laughs> You're joining us, are you? Well, might as well. It comes to a choice between face and the guns. Ace and old windbags like him. I'll take the guns every time. Pat Cleary. Martin Barrington. Pleased to meet you, Martin. Yeah. Strike! If we organise a cattle muster like this, we'd all get the sack. Yeah, I've seen better organised duck raffles in country pubs. Oh, they never expected so many volunteers. It'll take a month to get organised. We won't miss out, will we? Ah, <laughs> we'll make it. Geez, I remember a big muster up on the Barku. That was organisation for you. We had, what, 100,000 woolies coming in? Oh, uh, here we go. No, nah, fair dinkum. They were coming in from 100 mile around. They kicked up so much dust, we had to shear by a lamp light in the middle of the day. <laughs> right. You lot, on your feet. On your feet, I said. Look sharp. <clears throat> Do any of you blokes know anything about music? Well, uh, <clears throat> I studied a little, sir. Good. You and your mate, shift that piano into the officer's mess. Get on your way. First lesson, never volunteer for anything. Good on you, Marty. Excuse me, sir. Can I help him? What's your name, son? Rowley. Rowley what? Rowley Collins, sir. Right. On your way, Collins. Keep it still. Turn will advance. Left! Turn! Left, I said. That man with the big hat. Steady. Stand easy. Men of number three platoon. I am Lieutenant Harold Armstrong, and I am your platoon officer. You have all joined the colours of your own free will for the duration of the war. As volunteers, you will be treated like intelligent adults. Our battalion, the 8th, has formed so rapidly that there is a shortage of non-commissioned officers. So I have two temporary appointments to make. Firstly, is there any man who feels he has the experience to perform the duties of platoon sergeant? Sir, MacArthur, sergeant with the afternoon rifles. Yes, MacArthur. You will have three weeks' trial as sergeant. Now, a volunteer for corporal. Come, come, lads. The job pays an extra shilling a day. Yeah, me too. Right. I will have that man there. Do you agree, Private Barrington? You were a cadet lieutenant, I understand. Yes, sir. Uh, if that's what you want, sir. Good. Then that's settled. Sergeant MacArthur, take the men away and get them better dressed. Then give them two hours of close order drill. Sir! Platoon! Ten pen! <laughs> Right are you men? Let's get to know each other. 
They all know who I am. You may think those high and mighty officers run the army. Well, you'd be wrong. The army's run by sergeants. I always thought Bly was a captain, not a sergeant. What was that? Oh, I said uh, they should have made you captain, sergeant. Yeah. Well, now, I want you to call out your names and tell us what you did in civvy life. Johansson, dairy farmer. Johansson, dairy farmer. Well, well. What have we got here? Two and a half Dutchmen. Not Dutch, Sergeant. Danish. Carry on. Harris, Rassabat. You a pommy, Harris? English, Sergeant. I've been watching you, Harris. You look like you've been in the army before. I was in the Boy Scouts, wasn't I? That's so. Uh, next. Collins, bootmaker. Baker, stockman. Cleary, middleweight champion of North Queensland. All time champion horse breaker of the Outer Bar Coup. <laughs> and breaker of women's hearts everywhere. Oh. Anything else? Well, sometimes I tell lies. Yeah. <laughs> Shut up, Cleary. Next. Barrington, student. You're a bit old to be insured pants, aren't you, Barrington? What happened? They keep you back a couple of grades. <laughs> University student, sergeant. Oh. An educated man. Well, it's real nice to have a silver tail like you in the platoon. I thought we joined up to fight the Germans. What was that? Come on, speak up, laddie, so we can all hear. I said I thought we joined up to fight the Germans, Sergeant, not each other. There's another thing you want to know. Now that you're in the army, you all come under King's regulations. And it's a big, thick book where they list all the crimes they can think of. For the crimes they haven't thought of, the offender will have to deal with me in person. Things like having a big mouth, Cleary. And the penalty might be meeting me behind the tents at night. Right then. Let's begin. Now get back to attention. But turn! Right! Turn! By the left! Quick! March! Service dress, and we're off to the firing range. Hey, beauty. Phil. That's cool. Hang on, Marty. It's Australia. I'm a Queenslander. Bad luck, Pat. Officially Australian now, mate. Oh, well, that's not so bad. For a minute there, I thought you were going to make me a Victorian. Well, what's wrong yeah. with Victorians, you banana bender? Yeah. Well, I don't know. Have you got a couple of hours? Uh, <laughs> watch yourself. Blimey! It takes a bleeding war in Europe to make you lot understand you all belong to the same country. He's right, you know. Oh, yeah, he's right, you know. Yeah, Bill. At your targets! Ten rounds! Fire! I think we underestimated these men, Sergeant. A letter from your regiment, dear. 
The Germans have been repulsed outside Paris. They won't be able to take much of this. Should be over soon. Yes, dear, that's what you said weeks ago. Well, we've heard of nothing but defeats and retreats. Martin seems to have got in with a group of amusing young men. <laughs> a man called Cleary has taught him how to play two up. What on earth is two up? Do you remember Bertie Oldfield? We met him when we were in London last year. Yes, he was a captain in your regiment, wasn't he? And Tony went with Jones. And Sandy Fitzwilliam. Bellamy Carew. Yes, I remember. All dead. They and 20 other officers of the 2nd Battalion and 389 other ranks. It was the 2nd Battalion that offered Martin a commission. I'm sorry, Thea. It's the suddenness of it. It's the finest regiment in the British regular army. Destroyed. Come on, boys, get yourself set. An honest patch, too, up school. Famous the length and breadth of the outback. Got the Murrumbidgee kid to throw them in. He's going for his fourth straight head. He's got 20 quid to say he can do it. Got to cover, I'll have a piece of Hey, Pat. Hey. Oh, not now, Riley. I don't take underage bets. I don't want to bet. I just wanted to tell you that we're going. No, not, not now, mate. We all covered on the side. All covered heads. Yes, yes, yes. In the centre, all covered. All right, come in, spinner. Tails there, Pate. Tails there's a big winner. Ten percent wear and tear on the carpet. They said to tell you they're going over to the pub, mate. The pub's out of bounds. Come on, Pat. I've organised the back room. Good on you, Rolly. Yeah, tell them I'll be there in five minutes, mate. And the way I'm going, I'll be shouting. Okay. Have we got that other spinner? <laughs> <laughs> no, they're no class at all, mate. Yeah. <laughs> ah, well, you'll be happy enough here, Bill. Looks like one of your English pubs. Don't mind, so long as they serve beer. Yeah, pull up a pumpkin and sit down. <laughs> ah, evening, gents. Sorry to have to serve you out here, but the saloon's full of officers, the bar's full of sergeants. You wouldn't want to mix with them, would you? No. <laughs> Give us uh, five pints of beer, landlord. Oh, uh, no thanks, Pat. Four beers and a lemon squash, mate. Hey. Eh? Well, I'll sign the pledge. I promised my mum I wouldn't drink. All right, four pints of beer and a pint of lemon squash for our mate here. Yeah, his wife wears a cardigan backwards, right? And furthermore, he says, all the sheep bear a remarkable family resemblance. Come on, Pat. Oh, crikey, I know that. Oh, shut up. never as plastered as that. Well, you shut your noisy mouth. Uh... How'd you be, huh? A man works all week, and they come back to haunt you after a hour. I ought to do the lot of you. <laughs> but I won't, no. No. I'm gonna put you all on a charge. Come on, you couldn't walk back to camp, let alone write out a charge sheet. You had coming, pal. Hey, take it easy, Sarge. It's my fault, I brought him here. Nick off, kid! Why don't you start with someone your own size? Oh. <laughs> Oh. You heard him, Dick? No chance. I tell you what, though, I'd think twice about tackling him sober. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Robert. Yeah, man. Listen, we better get out of here. The place is going to be crawling with jacks. Listen, mate, we can't just leave him here like that. No, you're right. <laughs> Come, MacArthur, wake up. <sighs> Stew. The whole lot of you. You think it's all a game? We don't think it's a game, Sarge. Yes, you do. A big bloody game. You poor buggers are going to a war. A bullet in the guts is the best you can expect. Like my old man. 
like my old man. It took him ten years to die. I heard him coughing it up every night. Look at that. We've got more important things to do. Morning, sister. Can I carry a gear for you? You certainly can. Struth, what are you doing here? <laughs> Mum said me to keep an eye on you. Can you can carry your own gear, sis. Morning, sister. Yeah, well, I carry them. May I be of assistance, Mum? Thank you, Private. Oh, cool. Well, where are you ladies staying? So, this is what you meant when you said you'd be seeing us, huh? Well, I've had my name down on the reserves for months. And you never told us? We never asked. That was really good to see you. <laughs> you, uh, you coming to France with us, or...? Mm-hmm. Well, France, now I can tell you a few stories about... Put the bags about... down here, please, Corporal. Ah, uh, <laughs> cut the Corporal. <laughs> oh, I see. Army rules. Some places are out of bounds to other ranks. But you'd understand that, wouldn't you? Just like the big house at Hereford Downs. Well, one to you, madam, but I'll even the score. What? By applying for a commission? I wouldn't go that far, but I'll get you back. You. I've always been a top man oh. myself oh. on that sort of score. So we went for a day trip, uh, just a day trip, mind. Little town called Boulogne. Nice grub, but the beer wasn't much. Someone said the other day that the French eat frogs' legs. I don't think I'd like that much. Hey, boys. Dick. Dick. Hey, Dick. What do you reckon, Marty? What's that? They're saying in France that we could be eating frogs' legs. Not compulsory. What say you've been then? Mm hmm. Life's fairly snouted the young squire today. Me sister's a lieutenant, and Martin Barrington's only a corporal. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. What's France like? Uh, well, I went up the uh, Loire Valley, then it was, well, like something you've never seen before. Great slow river that never runs dry, vineyards, castles, a sun that never gets too hot. Any Sheilas? The Sheilas, you should try Paris. Well, go on. Folie Berger, Moulin Rouge, Baltabran, wine, women, and song right round the clock. <laughs> One soon learns to expect the unexpected in the army. On the day our transports were getting ready to leave Australian waters, Turkey came into the war on Germany's side. Instead of the fields of France, it was the sands of Egypt. Now, after five months of training, we were heading for a place called Gallipoli. Martin said the idea was to attack Germany through the back door. They even gave us a new name for the occasion, Anzac. Well, Pat says it sounds like a South American Indian tribe, but it stands for the Australian and New Zealand Army Corps. The mood was quiet. The boys knew that all of Australia would be watching us today. What are you breaking up the crate for? Oh, I was Rolly. Haven't you ever been in the bush? Of course not. You were brought up respectable, weren't you, Rolly? <laughs> now remember, lads, the biscuits and water you have it'll last for three days. There's nothing else on this spot I've got to Nothing but soldiers. What about that cigarette? 
Now we turn left once ashore. Clear the beach quickly. No smoking. Good luck to you, lads. You do, Skip. Good luck to you, sir. Good luck, Rolly. Three days rations, boys. The biscuits in the water. Let's look after them. Three days on the rations. Get up there. So the boats were all mixed up. I can't make contact with the company. You're on a hundred others. Yes, sir, but the, but the map doesn't make any sense. You're dead right there, son. Signal up. Get a message to the Colonel. Train the falls have landed us a mile to the north. Oh, gee, that we're on the wrong beach. Hey, Otto, slip up and tell the Turks it's a mistake. You bloody tell them, Cleary. Not me. Follow me! Come on, two sections, move! Stay in close to the wall! Keep it closer! Sergeant, advance your section now! Oh, can you make it? Move out faster! Hang on, old son. Medical section will be along soon. Keep your heads down! You ready, Eric? Move them up, Sergeant! On your foot, guys, and up here! Stretch your bearers! Move them, guys! Move them! Watch your footing! Keep down!
you. Where's your sergeant, mate? Come on. Come out, mate. Bloody thing's back the front. Come on. No good, mate. We're lost. Do you know which way to the beach? I may be buggered, but I'm not stupid. Look, mate, what do I know about the bush? Oh, we cannot do it. You go. I'm not going without you, mate. I'm getting out of here. <laughs> oh! <laughs> How are you, mate? Alive. <laughs> what are you doing? Having a picnic? You should be helping to dig in along this ridge. It's only 11 o'clock. We're miles short of our objective. The home team's got everything in its favour. They've got all the high ground. They know the bloody country. They've got reinforcements coming up. I reckon we're in real strife. No good. It's too steep. As long as we are wrong, manage. But it'll kill you! Quick! Let go! Main weapon in this war, the shovel. You're not wrong, mate. See anything, Dick? No, but they're out there, all right. Hey, company, stand to! Something stirring, sir? Yes, they're mounting a counter attack. We'll hold. Look around. What do you think? Good luck, Martin. Same to you, sir. Pick up your target! Don't waste that at every party. Reports the section, Corporal. They've retreated, sir. Told you we'd hold them. Another step back, though, we've been up to our necks in salt water. It's not over yet, Martin. Commander, sir. I came ashore as soon as I could. Well, those uh, New Zealanders and Australians of yours, Bridges, have done a magnificent job. Someone made a similar remark after the charge of the Light Brigade. If you have something to say, then say it. I believe it's time to seriously consider evacuation. Good God, man, do you realize... We you... have been landed in the wrong place. We have failed to take any of our objectives. Our men are clinging to chasms and to cliffs. 
If one part of the line breaks, the Turks will be on the beach in minutes. Fellas, Raleigh's back. A few cuts and scratches, but he's alive and kicking. Pat? Told you, the kids are born survivor. Yeah, you've got quite a story to tell too, haven't you? Yeah, I have. I started going back to the beach Oi. and... Save it! What's wrong with you? Where's Dick? He went out to look for those wounded blokes we heard calling for help. What? Well, we tried to stop him, but you know what he's like. Turks could come swarming across this gully any minute. Yep. Dick, you stupid bastard. Marty. <laughs> Stretch uh, bearer! Uh, do you realize I have committed my last reserves? Oh, Walker, there you are. What have you been doing? Taking on the Turks single handed? No, sir. But I have uh, been. Let General Bridges summarize. Of my three brigades, one has ceased to exist as a fighting formation. The other two have suffered severe casualties. And where are you getting your information from? From the wounded and men returning to the beach. God almighty! What have shocked men and stragglers to say that is accurate? It leads me to the conclusion that our fighting spirit that has held up so far will crack under this impossible pressure. I believe we should evacuate before this happens. An evacuation at night in contact with the enemy? That's a recipe for a shambles. I would rather stay and die on the beach. I have visited a number of the forward companies. They're holding well. Up there, the thought of failure hasn't even entered their heads. I cannot take responsibility for evacuation. And I have a responsibility to the government of Australia and my men. Signal from the Commander-in-Chief, sir. Thank you. Your news is indeed serious. There's nothing for it but to dig in and to stick it out. Evacuation is impossible. You have got through the worst of the business. All you have to do now is to dig, dig, dig until you are safe. Signed, Ian Hamilton, Commander-in-Chief. Well, there it is. You know, Bridges, you may have underestimated those Australians of yours. It's me. I'm coming in. Watch the arm. Oh, beauty. Jacko, when? I knew my mates wouldn't let me down. Come on, old son, let's get you comfortable. <laughs> There's scores of poor coots out there who'll never be found. Good to see you back, mate. <laughs> G'day, Rolly. Still in the land of the living, eh? What's up? Where's Marty? Got knocked ten minutes ago. Bad? Through the stomach. The acting corporal, Dick. I'm not going to take Marty's place. What about Bill? I want you. Crikey, he's a better soldier. Look, it's not a bloody debating society, Baker. Now listen to some of you coots, you think so. But Mr Armstrong wants you and that's the end of it, right? Right? Now sort out the reinforcements. Smartly. Only three. Yeah, two got knocked coming up. Names. Richie, Warner, I'm Flanagan. Okay, you blokes find Cleary, Harris and Collins. One each, I'll show you the ropes. Get going! What's the matter with you, mate? Someone pinch a bag of lollies or something. You could be handy if you don't get your block knocked off.
funny. Any pain? No, not much. You ever go in for the lotteries? No, what? Well, you ought to. We found the bullet. Bounced off your ribs, ended up near your pelvis. <laughs> Missed every vital organ on the way. A thousand to one shot. You're a very lucky fella. Have any trouble getting it out, or...? No, we didn't get it out. Don't worry. It's less dangerous that way. Oh, thanks anyway. Ah, that's all part of the service. Oh, that reminds me. I've got a letter for you. Here you go, mate. I'll give you a hand, eh? Good on you. Thanks very much. I see you're in the 8th. Hmm. Those nurses that came over with the 8th will be moving up here next month. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. Anyone in particular? Yeah, Sister Baker. Do you know her? Do I? Doesn't everybody? When did you in? I'll let you know. Dear Martin, the news came through at last that you were alive and recovering. It sure lifted the spirits of the old platoon, particularly Dick and Mr. Armstrong. It was a real pleasure to see them back to their old selves again. Not that there's many of the old faces left. Just 11. Things have been pretty lively over here, I can tell you. Well, even the generals aren't safe. General Bridges, our commanding general, was killed the other day. A few of the new reinforcements showed up well, particularly a bloke called Flanagan. He's sort of like Bill and Pat in a way. He's got a nose for trouble and can anticipate. I know you'll like him. Most of us have had a few more nicks, including yours truly, but nothing serious. Oh, and there's some furphy about some big attack, so stay in hospital. Pat says only mugs live here. Best from all the boys, even MacArthur. Yours, Rolly. Martin? Uh. Martin? Uh. Oh. 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 You! You! Is there any way to treat your wounded hero? Have you got any drains or sutures? <laughs> All healed up. Headaches? Mm -mm. Well, cop this! Oh. 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 You rat bags, get back to bed or I'll have you on a charge. <laughs> to sum up. The Anzac Corps will launch a series of attacks here at 0900 hours, the Neck and Lone Pine. These will cover the landing of the two English divisions at Souvle Bay. Do you have any comments for the Commander-in-Chief, sir? Bloody murder! I beg your pardon. Bloody murder! Could you put it into language that I can convey to the Commander-in-Chief? Right, then. One, you ask us to commit tired troops against a well-dug-in, determined enemy. Two, every inch of that ground is swept by fire. Three, the objective is to draw the Turkish reserves on us while you land two divisions at Suvla. Now, this can easily be accomplished by means of raids and diversions without the slaughter of a full-blown attack. Damn! 
Dick and I would have been in Queensland now. It's a real man's world, isn't it? Not impressed, huh? No. That's why I left the bush in the first place. That's why I like it here. You like the war? I like what it gives me. A chance to run my own life. Come on, you've got everyone from captains to generals running your life. You missed the point. Nobody here gives a hoot who I am or where I came from. They're only interested in how I measure up in my job. You try that as a woman in a country town. Well, what if you had good reason to go back one day? Such as? Oh, I don't know. Well, let's say you and I got married. <laughs> oh, Martin. It could never happen. People like me become mistresses to people like you, not wives. I oh, know, this war is going to sweep away all that nonsense. Is it? Marty, the senior doctor tells me he could get you to a convalescent camp in Egypt. No way. I'm going back to Anzac. Why, for God's sake? Well, I'll look after Dick, for one thing. Oh, blow Dick. He can look after himself. Who's going to look after you? Make powder. A bit of old shrapnel. Just a dash of barbed wire. Rusty if possible. Damp it down. And detonator and fuse. Oil off. Bloody marvellous. From the greatest empire in the world, the best it can do for its men is a homemade bomb in a jam tin. There you go, mate. Still flashing our wrap. Yeah, good. <laughs> Stay where you are. We've got to keep him away from the detonator. Good to see you, Ross. Good, mate. Good. Probably has a gun. Oh, no, never mind his guts. What about the nurses, mate? Oh, hey, so wait okay. a second, Brigade HQ, fellas. Mr. Murdoch. Hello. You back already? Martin, isn't it? That's right. Looks at you for a convalescence. Yeah, well, you know, someone's got to look after these blokes. Ah, oh, seeing you around, no doubt. Yeah, straight down that way. Thank you. Who's he, mate? Keith Murdoch. Oh, the reporter bloke. He's not your ordinary reporter, I tell you. I met him on Lemnos. He's supposed to be looking into a postal arrangements for the troops, but there's more to him than meets the eye. Yeah, good or bad. Uh, he's on our side. You picked a good time to come back, mate. The knobs are planning something big. <laughs> well, I always was a lucky one, wouldn't I? Hey, Martin, hey, I've written a poem. Do you want to hear it? Yeah. No, oh, spare us, uh... mate. Oh, no, hang on, hang on. I think the kid's got a bit of talent. Go hey, on, on the box. Go on, on the box. Yeah, listen up. Folly's on. A bit of quiet, to be honest. We've forgotten all our manners, and our talk is full of slang. Because you haven't got time for grammar when you hear the rifles bang. <laughs> go on, go on. The heat and flies and lice and things has drove us nearly balmy. So we peeled off all our clobber and we're called the Naked Army. Colonel White. Morning, Murdoch. How are your uh, inquiries coming along? They're progressing, thank you. We have a signal from the Commander in Chief. He requests a departure date from you. Requests or orders? At that level, it's the same thing. He is aware, I imagine, that I'm here at the behest of the Australian government. I'm afraid the British High Command is not much preoccupied with the wishes of the Australian government. But they are quite willing to use our troops. I should like to stay. At least until after the big attack. It's not like you to be so quiet, Colonel. It's not part of my job to supply information to civilians. No, but it is mine. 
and to governments. I think the Commander-in-Chief is aware of that. Particularly your conversations with the Times correspondent. I see. The High Command's intelligence is good. I only hope their generalship is up to the same standard. There is a rumour that General Walker is strongly against the attack. He regards it as an unnecessary sacrifice of Australians and New Zealanders. As a soldier, you don't expect me to answer that. No. But as a civilian, you don't expect me not to ask him. A date, Murdoch. They want a date. And they shall have one. Sooner or later. Good morning, Mrs. Mrs. Baker. Oh, keep away from me. Mrs. Baker, please, I only want to have a word with you. No, you're like the crows. You only come round when there's something dead in the paddock. Mrs. Baker, please. You've got an army telegram on you, haven't you? No, I don't have any telegrams with me today. But I do have some news of your son, Dick. I thought you'd like to know. I gather you haven't had a letter yet. Kate, she writes like clockwork, but Dickie's not one for pen and paper. Yes, well, Martin Barrington's letters have been coming through, and he writes so much about Dick. Well, go on, then. Oh, please, Reverend. Well, for a start, it appears your son is doing very well in the army. They've already made him a corporal. Here, mate. You OK? Yeah, OK. What's it like? Oh, it's a hell of a fight, but the boys are in the Turkish trenches. Yeah? It's like a mine going mad. Uh, running the tunnels and things running all over the place. Uh, just our bloody luck to be a carrying party while the other blokes do all the fighting. Well, suits me just fine. So you had a long talk to Kate, hey? Yeah, long enough. That's what I told you. You'll do the right thing by him, won't you? What the hell was that supposed to mean? Well, you lot generally get what you want. Now, look here. All I was no, doing over... to me. She's my sister and she's got a future. I don't want her headed in the wrong direction, that's all. Yeah, and you mean my direction? Well, depends on what you got in mind. That's a crazy subject to talk no, about. No, Two bomb carriers, no, forward of the double. Let's go. Straight out the slap. The sergeant will tell you where to go. Come on, Marty. Besides, I've come back and haunt you. You won't be giving any more directions? No. Which way? Let's go. Turk! What the hell? I got some bombs here, mate. You cut me when I tell you? Right. Come on, Marty. Yeah, 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 it's coming, coming, coming. Come on, come on. Beauty, Marty, keep them coming. What the hell is happening? I don't know. You stay here, mate. I'll have a squizzy around the corner. Hey, take it easy. Dick, take it easy. I'll be right, mate.
Dick! Dick, you okay? Sweet as a bun. Well, just answer me next time, huh? I had my hands full. Bombs, Marty. Take it easy. Keep it going, Marty. Only seconds to the final bell, mate. We heard your little shindig. It doesn't look like you need us now. It was all his work. Geez, he must have been a goer. I was supposed to be protecting his back. A mate of yours, was he? Come on, pal. Go back to your own mob. You've done your share. By the way, the boys have taken Lone Pine. You've heard, huh? I had to come just in case. <laughs> and I was so close, funny I looked around. No, no, no. I've seen as much death as you have. I know how random the chances are. Stop it. Do you hear? It's not going to be the same, you know. Nothing's going to be the same after all this. Let's all face up to it now. How did you angle this? Oh, Harry Armstrong, bless him. I have to go back tomorrow. Gives us some time. 
Everything's measured in hours these days. That gave me a bundle of money to buy up every luxury on the island. <laughs> You've come to the right woman. I have this friendly Greek merchant. No, Martin. It's enough. Mr. Lloyd George will see you now, sir. Come in, Mr. Murdoch. How good of you to take the time to visit me. The other way around, I think, Minister. No, not at all. I bring greetings from my Prime Minister. He says you and he have much in common. Apparently, you both had the good fortune to be born Welsh. Good fortune, is it? I sometimes wonder if it's not a cross. Still, your Mr. Hughes has the Celtic fire in his belly, so I'm told. I wish some of my cabinet colleagues had a touch of it. You were nobbled by the military, I hear. Military intelligence intercepted me at Marseille and relieved me of a letter I was asked to deliver from Gallipoli. It was written by the Times correspondent and a number of officers. It was highly critical of the conduct of the campaign. Pity it might have pierced the fog of military dispatches. Very strange dispatches our generals write. They conceal what they should reveal, like the clothes of a virtuous woman. But I do have another letter. Very like it. Missed opportunities? Chaotic supply lines, confusion in the medical arrangements, incompetent staff work. Oh, this is very good, very good. I will have it circulated as a cabinet document. Very good. Good because it will jolt some of my colleagues. Good because some of us believe that our energies should not be directed into bungled sideshows like Gallipoli. But bad too. Bad for the British cause. We will win this war. We have to win this war. But it will not be won by fox hunting fools or generals whose military imagination has fossilized after chasing a few ragged farmers around the South African veldt. Sir, may I report this conversation to the Australian Prime Minister? Oh, you write to him, do you? He has asked me to keep him informed on developments in London. You know, Murdoch, I think you and I are going to get along very well together. Yeah, you blacks have never eaten like this before, let me tell you. And of course, me piece of resistance. Damper started with raisins, smothered with apricot jam. Spotted dog. Looks more like a sick cat to me. Yeah, yeah, we'll show you city blokes. How we live like kings up the bush. Mm. All this missing is a tender little leg of jumbuck. How about a bit of Queensland goat? I heard that. And if I recognise the voice, you'll get nothing. Sit there with... Dump. I wouldn't swap ten yards of the drought-stricken Baku for this whole bloody rotten fly-blown peninsula. Yeah, and you'll all be here. We'll all be in with bloody old men. Already are, you silly goose. Oh, no. Stop it! <laughs> Careful, Cleary. You could kill somebody with that. <laughs> Evacuation? We are expected to get 40,000 men off Anzac in full sight of the enemy. Well, you're being less than the chatterbox today, White. Come on, man, tell me. 
Is the British Army expected to slink away like thieves in the night? The quieter the better. I've been working on a feasibility study on how we just might avoid casualties, General. This will need to be good, right? What's it about? There's no firing, not even any shooting back. I don't know, Rolly. I'll tell you what my guess is. We're leaving. Leaving Gallipoli? Or quitting. Living to fight another day. Oh, come off it, Marty. We can't just pack up and go. Why not? Because we don't bloody quit, that's why not. Hey, who said anything about quitting? We tried this back door to Germany nonsense and it failed. Time we went in the front door. France. Fuck. After seven months on the peninsula, we were as keen as the heads to break the stalemate. We thought something funny was going on when we were ordered to play cricket on the only bit of flat ground at Anzac. We're also acutely aware that this place was under observation by the Turks. Well, it wasn't called Shell Green for nothing. Sergeant MacArthur, as usual, took the whole thing very seriously. We noticed he picked all the best cricketers for his team, leaving Martin with the also-rounds like me. He also made Pat the umpire, which turned out to be the worst decision he'd made for some time. I think Pat would have preferred to get his famous two-up school going. Right on your toes, boys. Sergeant MacArthur turned out to be a very fast bowler, but he seemed to think it was a grudge match between himself and Martin. Ho -ho! What do you mean, no ball? You overstepped the mark by at least a foot, son. No ball. Ah, uh, ah, uh, don't argue with the umpire. No ball. OK. OK. No ball last time. Don't argue with the umpire. Oh, you're not the umpire anymore. Go on, hey? go on, get off. Play cards. You, can't send the umpire off. You, you, come on. You get the back, Mary. You're going to umpire. Can see that line? Yeah. It's not there. Sir. No, no balls. Three thousand enough tonight, sir. Without a hitch. <laughs> what was that? The one they usually send over at this time. 
20,000 still to go. And the next two nights of the clincher. Is it really possible we can get them away from under their very noses? If everyone adheres to the plan, we can. It's never been done before, you know. Ten and a half minutes. Simple. Guard commander is on the beach in position, sir. Mr. Armstrong. Okay, Sergeant. Thanks for letting the originals be the last to leave, sir. Nobody could have done better, Rolly. Nobody could have led us better, Harry. Right, sir. Well, it's time. They can't hear us leaving. Yeah, I feel like a bloody dingo sneaking away in the dark. They say it'll be over by Christmas. We can go to Queensland next year. Come on, mate. Look, if you thought of all the good blokes that we've lost through this, Marty, you'd go crazy. It was a stuff up from the start. Let's go, eh?
All parties on the beach now, sir. And only two casualties. Organization and planning. After nine months in Gallipoli, our only achievement was the way we left. This must never happen again. Who was that bloke, mate? General White. Yeah, well, I hope he can practice what he preaches when we get to France. Real war. 